one of these days I will get all of the buttons right <laughs> one of these times. Anyways, welcome to the Designer and the Dyer. We're both back and excited to be here today. We are chatting about what's on our hooks and needles for April. So tune in, grab a beverage, and let's talk fiber. And hello. I think I goofed up that time. That's okay. It happens. Oh my goodness. Well, hello, hello. We're here Hi. Again. again. Oh my goodness. A week goes by so fast. I know. And I wasn't here last week. Oh yeah. It's been two for you. Yes. Last weekend was Easter weekend. So I took the weekend off. Yes. And you, from what I heard, you had a fabulous relaxing weekend. Um, I don't know if it was relaxing. I don't know if it was fabulous, but I did lots. <laughs> so normally I work like, you know, Friday, Saturday, and then I'm off Sunday, Monday, and you know, mom duty Sunday, Monday. Um, but um, I had Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday off. I know I missed you. I missed you too. I missed my customers as well. But it was nice um, having four days with no alarm clock. Yes. Just the dog. <laughs> and even she wanted to sleep in. Oh. <laughs> and then for the first time in I don't know how long, I was actually a Saturday shopper. Right. Yes. My daughter and I went out and hit up a couple of thrift stores on Saturday. And I came home with two chairs. <laughs> two chairs. My yeah. favorite for shopping. Yes. I've been looking for a computer desk chair for a while because we just had a dining chair at our um, computer desk where my son sits all the time. Right. And so I ended up finding him um, a computer desk chair for ten dollars. Wow. Total Can't score. Wrong. Right. And then, um, oh, the other chair I picked up was fifteen, and it's just a living room chair. Right. Right. Yeah. Turned out good. It was a good deal. So yeah, if you walked away $25 out of your pocket for a Saturday shop and you had fun, that's fantastic, right? Yeah. It okay. was keeping out with my daughter for a change, just the yeah. two of us. Oh, <laughs> mother-daughter day. Yeah. Oh, and then Easter surprised. dinner, of course, on Sunday, I cooked a ham dinner. Okay. With um, mashed potatoes and gravy, <gasps> scalloped potatoes, oh. cream corn, regular oh. corn. Oh. Yeah. I think I'll come to your place next Easter. <laughs> <laughs> you get a smorgasbord. You get two different choices. Well, I have picky family members, so okay. we have to make allowances for those things. <laughs> <laughs> my uh, husband doesn't like scalloped potatoes, but my daughter and I do, so we had to have scalloped potatoes. And then, uh, yeah, husband won't eat cream corn either, but the kids and I like it, so cream so corn as well. And honestly, it's not that big a deal when you've got the kids helping you out. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And plus Come over and stir this. And, then, <laughs> and what was for dessert? Because I know that you always do a dessert. Well, I made raspberry pie and a friend of mine came over and she brought cherry pie. So we had two kinds of pie for dessert. Oh, my goodness. Lucky. Oh, darn, eh? <laughs> I know. Where was I? Oh, I we had Easter brunch that day. So, yes. Yeah, that was a big family. So, yeah, we had bits of everything. And, well, it was like, you know, eggs and bacon, and they just go out. That's right. so nice, though. It is. It's so nice to catch up with everybody. And, of course, we uh, brought uh, little Izzy to introduce to the family. And Can you hear my barking dog? 
Yes, I hear scam. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know what her problem is. Yeah, at least she's not a yappy barker. Let, you know, me, let me just go see what the problem is. I'll be right back. Let her in. Yeah. So it just leaves me. Hi. <laughs> so for me, it's been a whole puppy week. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> my days are so full of fun I mean puppies are just like how can you not get up happy right when you have puppies in your life so anyways um yeah it's it's been a really hectic week um I know that she can hear me in the background there but uh for my puppies um I have my girl on um Fridays, Thursday afternoon, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then from Monday till Thursday is when I take care. I babysit or puppy sit um, her baby brother. So he, that is so wild. I can't I believe know. you babysit too. I know, I know, and they're not even twelve weeks old yet, or they're just they'll be going on twelve weeks. But no, okay. Uh, so he comes in. Aries comes in at uh, about six thirty in the morning. And uh, Indy is a very good babysitter. Like oh, right now, goodness. puppies are outside. She's running up and down the lane with a stick. And they're chasing her and chasing her. And she poops them out. So Good. <laughs> so Indy's morning, done a good job then. <laughs> I think he is a fantastic babysitter. Fantastic. I am so blessed with both breeds. The Old English uh, Bulldog, as Laura knows, fabulous breed. French yeah. Bulldog fabulous brain so yeah i'm very very blessed my mornings are very perky and uh i'm very grateful very very grateful for my babies yeah. and little miss chihuahua's down there yeah no idea what scamp was barking about but ann's got her now so hopefully she'll behave herself well, and be quiet she, she's i shut the other door too well, so um our house is set up weird what's that our house is set up weird and my okay. office the door to my office is actually in the master bedroom. It was supposed to be like a walk-in closet or something, I guess, originally. Okay. Okay. And so Scamp was laying on my bed and I had shut the door to the office, but she was barking in my bedroom. So oh, I kicked so her out and now both doors are shut. So <laughs> <laughs> sure. if anybody wants a dog... <laughs> oh, you would never let go of her. She's no, just... I wouldn't. Not really. No, no. They just make your heart sing, right? They do. She's adorable. <laughs> and then she's bad. And then she's bad. Brat. Brat. Yeah. She likes uh, to be difficult sometimes. <laughs> we always open up with our doggies. Just They're just the highlight of a day, you know. So, yeah. and then, uh, and I didn't put it up on our, our things to go up, but... Uh, this week, I was just thinking about uh, Lane Magazine uh, came out with uh, the new book that they're coming out, Strands of Joy, Volume 2. Mm -hmm. It's uh, now on uh, pre-orders. But they came out, uh, I guess it was last month, maybe the month okay. before. They came out with um, an embroidery, embroidering on knits. Ooh. And uh, I took a picture of uh, Izzy with a sweater on that is embroidered with little leaves and pearls on it. Yes. And I was... <laughs> post that i just like that that's coming back the embroidery on knitting i just think it's so beautiful well if you can do it i don't know if i'd be any good at doing that <laughs> you know my sewing skills are pretty much nil <laughs> and even for trying to do stuff like that like even mm -hmm. i like doing stuffies but i always resort to using safety eyes because they turn out way better than the <laughs> eyes i tried to make up <laughs> Well, I'm so excited. I do want to get, I, I, I had the first volume of Strands of Joy by, oh, sorry, I can, I've got so many books, I can never remember names. I can tell you titles, but I can never remember names of authors and unless yep. it's, I follow religiously. But uh, anyways, uh, yeah, I was very excited to see that they came out with volume two. Um, there's some really cool uh color work patterns there um some of them are a little bit different than volume one like different kind of style and vibe to it but yeah. it's still pretty cool and then yes i need to get that embroidery because embroidery is me it just feels like the 70s are coming back 
I just don't want to see um, uh, 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 gauchos again. Remember gauchos? They were like, they came down to your knees and they, they went wide. So they looked like a skirt when you had oh, your but Yes. Yes. Well, I used to have a corduroy pair, brown okay. corduroy. And I used to have a red tartan pair. So I just pray they never come. I'll wear almost anything else, but not that. <laughs> Just not gauchos again. No. Yeah, I guess not. Eh? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Bad deal. Bad deal. So, yeah, so those were the two. I was so interested in those two books coming out. And uh, then I was just sitting here. And, you know, it's funny the things that you pick up and see. I just realized the whole st uh, skiing uh, bands. Yeah. They've done them on Vaseline paper. I love that look. That's another. Old. Oh, yeah, they're thin. Yeah. yeah, but it's Vaseline paper. This is what we used to call it. I don't know what you call it now. Tracing it's paper. It's like a wax paper kind of thing, eh? Yeah. So I was just sitting here going, wow, that's kind of cool. It is. <laughs> Most don't do that. No. There's quite a few other tags that, yeah. I know I've got to change my tags. And that's what, like, I'm so getting excited right now because for most that uh, know what had been go going on in my life is um, that I haven't done a dye now since before my surgery. Yes, so that's the last, right. I think the last dye I did was in August. No, okay, that's not 100% true. We did okay. one together. Oh, okay, yes. We did the Christmas. We did yeah. our Christmas tie together. But other than that, I haven't put out any sorts of collections. No, that's right. I know. So, yeah. So this last week, I'm trying to juggle my knitting, uh, my crochet cardigan, and winding off skeins. Um, and I'm and dog sitting. <laughs> and dog sitting. And dog sitting to get it all done. But I am so excited. So, Let's pull that one up just so everybody knows. And I'm sure I just had it there. So you can talk about this special day. Yes. LYS Day? Yes. Let's talk about LYS Day. So LYS Day was started by, I'm, oh, I'm not even sure. Was it the Craft Yarn Council uh, or TNNA? Uh, uh Yes. I think it was probably TNNA. Yes, it was. It was. Which yeah. is the, I don't know, something about Needle Arts Association. Anyways, mm -hmm. it's a big uh, a group of um, different fiber arts. Um, and mm -hmm. it's, it started in the States. But LYS Day is, to, is a day to support your local yarn stores. It's just a celebration of these little uh, individual shops. And I happen to own one. Mm -hmm. uh, and so every year we do an event on the last Saturday in April, so April 27th this year, and uh, Sweet Yarns is having an open house. I know, exciting, isn't it? <laughs> well, you know, it is fun. We have, you know, lots of people come in and show up and we have a good time. There's, I always bring in some kind of treats. Mm -hmm. um, a few years we had one of my customers offered to make a cake. I think I'm just picking up goodies though this year. And then we usually have um, a trunk show. Yes. Last year was the bariatric knitter, and we're having the bariatric knitter do another one this year. We're so excited. And then I usually have some other goodies that either release that day or exclusive to that day. Yes. Um, and then I know Baroco is doing a free pattern. Oh, are they? Okay. Yeah. And I got news on that. Uh, Casa Pinka usually does one too, but I haven't heard anything yet. Okay. Um, she usually does some kind of fingering weight. Actually, I'm going to quick check my email since I have it open yeah. and see if I got anything. But no, she usually does um, some fingering weight project for then. Oh, nice. It's been nice. a free shawl or. Yeah. Um, well, last year, was it a, like a poncho? It's not a poncho, but like a poncho. Yeah. yeah. Oh. So we'll see if she does one this year, but. It's just a fun day. Well, yeah, because I always get the two mixed up for uh, Worldwide Knitting Day. Um, and I yeah, kind of. So that's just to show off that you are a crafter. That you're a crafter. And, and a lot of years are always welcome at those as I well. I was just going to say that a lot of times people think it's just for knitting, but no, no, it's. Well, it generally was started, started. as a knit event, but we yes. always 
especially at my yarn shop, we always welcome uh, knitters and crocheters. Hey, listen, if you want to spin, you can do spin. that too. Why not? Yes. Yeah. I would say weave, but a lot of them don't have portable weaving. No. So. <laughs> Next thing you know, you got a big one sitting out in front of the shop, right? Oh, that would be cool, actually. Put it on a trailer <laughs> and drag it around. And drag it. Hey, I'll reserve the front parking just for you. It'd be like those barbecues that they take on the trailer, the smokers, like for the big barbecue. Yeah. Put a big yeah. loom on it or something like that, right? We're, we're tailgating with our weaving looms and spinning wheels. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, why not? It could be fun. Yes, that would be fun. I would enjoy it. I wish I didn't sell my spinning wheel. But yeah. you know what? You just, you get so much that you're good at or you do or you love doing. And then suddenly you're not doing them as frequently. And I think I've mentioned that before is um, it got to the point where as much as I love spinning, now that I don't have the sheep, now that I don't have alpacas, uh, there is no reason. The only time I was spinning per each year was just for the tour de fleece. And that was it. Okay. So, you know, it was best to, I, I was so fortunate, I ended up selling everything to a young woman who had a two-year-old, and she was just getting into spinning. Oh. And she wanted to be able to, you know, pass it on to her children. And, you know, yeah. that is the best cause, is when you can pass something that you know, being an older folk, pass it down, and you know that, you know, are you old? What are you talking about? Well, I've got, I'm turning 58 in three weeks. Just a short while. Just a short while. But what I do want to talk about is, because I'm so excited about it, okay. is the ship is in. Oh. <laughs> the ship is in. And uh, Lauren is now going to be stocking my favorite yarn brand, Sands Garden. Yeah. I wanted, I didn't do an overlay of this, but this is the April blouse. From you one of the books, yes, because I did bring those books over, and this is one that is out of, uh, what did I say it was? Oh, it's out of the Mandarin Petite, which is 100% cotton, mm -hmm. so guess what I need? <laughs> I, I've already been going through colors. <laughs> have you really? Oh, yes, I have. <laughs> well, I'm putting an order in... Um, Tuesday or Wednesday. I was hoping to do a Tuesday, but I don't know if I'm going to have enough time because the Estelle order arrived today, I think. Oh, did it? Um, okay. Yeah. So I am have to get some Sunday, some mohair, some double Sunday. Um, yeah. And then we'll see. I want to see how long this takes to get to us because it's coming from a new supplier who's on the West Coast. Yeah. So I don't know what um, turnaround time is going to be like, but then maybe we can add another yarn on the next one. We'll see how it goes. Choose Am I going to get my uh, teak, uh, teak line? I'm going to try. Yeah. We'll see what they've got in. Because I don't know yeah, if you want to do that one too. This is the other one that I want to do. This is also from Sands Garn, and this is the bucket hat. And bucket hats have really come back in. They're quite popular. Actually, I've seen them in quite a few newer shows. Um, they've been highlighted as a yes. garment item for the summer. So They're this, cute. They are. So definitely, yeah. I think they fit on a lot of different um, head styles, too. Like, it's probably something you could wear. Yes, it's a one, it's their one size fits all, basically, but uh, it is. Yeah, but I'm talking about, line. like, people that can't necessarily wear a toque might be able yes. to wear that. Because yes. it has some shaping to it. I have yeah. a few um, that I did, but that was back in the days when um, we didn't have, like, a fingering weight type uh, cotton. Um, we were limited much to... Um, Dishcloth cotton. Dish cloth <laughs> cotton. So I do have a few bucket hats. They like you know they're from like fifteen years ago, anyways. Um, that uh, were crocheted and uh, yeah, they're dishcloth cotton. So yeah. I am super excited. <laughs> yeah, to try out that one. Yeah. Yes, they are very cute. So that is what I have to do for this year. Other than that, I got to get caught up on stuff. Yeah. Same. Ooh. Who doesn't? 
Donna is watching and hi, she Donna. says, hi guys, I have you on while I'm repotting some plants and watching outside. If there are any effects from the eclipse. Ooh, yes. I forgot that's on oh, today. Eh? Yes. Yes. I've heard Niagara Falls is going to be like, you won't be able to get in or out of the city. Oh, and really? Kingston, in Kingston too, apparently is a hot eclipse site. Mm -hmm. I, you know, what? I've never seen one. I've never gone out to watch one. I'm not. I don't really care either. Aren't we awful Canadians? <laughs> no. It just means the kids are home today. They changed oh. the school. Right. PA Day was supposed to be near the end of the month on a Friday, and they switched it to the today because okay. of the eclipse. They didn't want kids possibly watching it. I'm like, okay. And what time is it supposed to happen? Like around 2. Because it's... It's so cloudy outside here. I yeah, don't... it's dark and cloudy here. It's not like we're going to be able to watch it. No, no. Well, we'll see it on TV later. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, someone else I was talking to said they were going to watch it as well on TV. Okay, yeah. yeah. I, I just, it's not that I don't like being outside or anything, but I just, I don't know. I don't think I've ever seen one. I've seen them in movies. <laughs> yeah, that's good enough. It's not something that totally interests me. Same with like moons and things. Like they talk about harvest moons and strawberry moons and blue moons and la la la. I'm like, yeah, okay, sure. If I happen to spot it, great. If I don't, oh well. I'd rather go and see the Northern Lights or something like that. Yeah, they're a little more appealing, I guess. I know. I, know. I would rather just sit inside and knit. <laughs> <laughs> I got my knitting to look at. I don't need to like, look at the moon or the sun or sit outside with your little with a little headlamp on, right? Yeah. <laughs> Too funny, eh? Okay. Well, I have a new pattern release. Yes, I heard you released and didn't even tell me you were releasing it. So I was like, well, I was surprised because I did jump in Thursday to watch Sweet Yarns That's Live. Right. But um, I was cooking. I was, uh, what was I doing? Oh, I was doing a quinoa uh, Texas barbecue dish. It turned out really good. I'm going to send some for you to taste it, but it did okay. turn out really good. So, yeah. And I was doing cupcakes. Oh, yes. Okay, yeah, before we go into my pattern, tell about what happened with the cupcakes. <laughs> oh, my word. So, you know, when you got someone in your life that you really love and you want to do something so super special. So, yep. And then back, back, it just fails. So I um, I have one of those uh, cupcake trees, right? It's like, it looks like a little wrought iron with the little spirals. And you put the yeah. Totally so my cool. so my son was kind enough. He spent the evening and he made like twenty four cupcakes, fit all in mm -hmm. chocolate marble, and then I made a uh, cream cheese chocolate cream cheese icing. And it was Ooh. it was my baby's uh, birthday the next day. So, anyways, he uh, came over like in the morning, and uh, I got up at three o'clock in the morning to make sure everything was iced and they were out of the fridge so that they would get soft. Because, you know, the fridge always hardens everything, right? Yeah. So, anyways, uh, about 6.30, quarter to 7, I picked it up, took it outside, you know, I was going to present it to him, and I slipped on the ice. And the cupcake... <laughs> He says the cupcakes didn't even go up, that they just stayed there. When I went down, they ran down on my head. <laughs> They're hitting my head, my body. They hit the side of the house. They hit the window, the basement window in the house. They hit the ground. They, it was like cupcakes everywhere. And I was like, I just lied on the ground. I didn't know what else to do. I was like, <laughs> like do you pick one up and say, Happy birthday. <laughs> Did he get to eat any? There was only like three or four that kind of stayed in the bottom holders. They were kind of the bigger ones and they were clunked right in, right? Okay. But no, no, the rest. They were just, oh. yeah. 
Boo. I had to dig up the snow because all the chocolate icing on the snow. I didn't want the puppies to start eating the chocolate yes. icing, right? That all over the windowsill. Like it was just I had I did and he didn't even tell me that I had chocolate icing stuck on my face <laughs> and all in my hair. Of course, you know, I didn't even think of it. I was in shock. <laughs> oh dear. So yeah, it's a memory. It's a memory. Yep. Oh, I did something similar one time. What did you do? I didn't. Uh, I rescued the cake, but oh. I was glad I had two. <laughs> <laughs> so it was Aiden's birthday one year. And was it? She must have. Yes, I think it was. She was having a birthday party. Right. We were doing. Because um, you could take kids bowling and they'd serve you hot dogs and whatever. And then. Okay. You could bring in your own cake. So I made two small cakes, the exact same. Okay. Um, and she wanted like Minecraft or something that year. So I had some Minecraft characters to stick on the cake. And so there was <laughs> two rounds. I had iced them the same. And then, yeah. So I was walking with the one cake at home still. And okay. uh, I tripped on the floor. Oh, no. And the cake went up off the plate and back down onto the plate. <laughs> That's a save. That was a save. Yeah. Okay. Well, it was askew on the plate and the icing was wrecked, kind of, sort of. So I left that one at home and took the other <laughs> one. But... The other... <laughs> but I was able to save that one and put it back on top, right? And yeah, I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> These are the adventures that happen sometimes. Does anyone else have a story? <laughs> We don't, we oh, like these. Uh, one of these, you stories, went out right? for a few seconds. Oh, your Wi Fi is cutting in and out, I think. We're hey, losing well, Lauren will be back in a minute unless she's got her hands like this. <laughs> <laughs> You're the one that's stuck. Okay. Yeah, I think we might have lost Leanne there for a second. Her picture is frozen. So I'm going to then chat about. Oh, there ah, it is. there we go. You were stuck. Are you back yet? I'm back. I never left. You were stuck. Oh, she's frozen. I don't know if it's uh, no, Lauren I'm not that's frozen. frozen. She's. I think she's still talking. I am. I You're, guess we'll we'll frozen. see. I'm gonna leave and come back in just in case okay. it is me. <laughs> we'll see what happens. It's showing that I'm still alive and going. We lost Leanne. Yes. All right. So while Leanne um, comes back, I'm going to talk about my new patterns. I released two new patterns this week. Last, well, Thursday last week. Uh, I did the elementary blanket and the elementary pillow. So the idea behind these are that you can do one pattern for all the sizes you'd ever want to make. How cool is that? So I've got the elementary blanket does 18 sizes from baby ones up to a California King. It's currently done in a worsted weight yarn. Um, but we are, I'm working on DK and chunky weight ones as well. So if you purchase the pattern now, you will get it updated later. Uh, and I put in suggestions on how to, to stripes if you want. It's an easy knit. This is a great beginner pattern or experienced knitters too. Um, yeah. And then the other pattern is the elementary pillow. So it's done as a 14 by 14 sample uh, with formulas so that you can do any size pillow you want to do. It's got a few cast on and bind off instructions that are included in the pattern so that you can do whatever style that you feel most comfortable with, depending on your experiences uh, and what you can handle so far. And then I did put in a few suggestions for different closure options too. Uh, it's also currently written only in worsted weight, but I will be updating with DK and chunky weight information as soon as I get a chance to. So that's what I've got so far. And she's back, yay! I'm back. Well, I wasn't too sure if it was me that was gone. I figured it was me because uh, the office is in uh, concrete blocks. 
Yes, you have Wi-Fi so, issues sometimes. Just in here. So I run off of an extender. So I thought, okay, it's going to be that. So I left and came back. So it's a good thing you had stuff so you weren't just standing there with us. Like, <laughs> we're sitting there like a deer with the, in the headlights. Sorry to yep. deal. So, yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. those are my two new patterns. Uh, yeah, what I saw because I came in, saw and left again. So yeah. Yeah, good stuff. Well, that's nice. It's nice to have a simple pattern in your your files, you know. Yeah. Um, because uh, you uh, in anything, like I, I just don't want to say it's in pillows, but anything. So sometimes just to have something simple um, is far better than to do something complicated, right? Well, and and both those patterns are great for a beginner. They're great for experienced knitters. Um, nice and easy, mindless knitting, honestly. Yeah. Um, and like my instructions, I always include, you know, the different cast on and bind off instructions in case you haven't done them before. Uh, I'm not bragging, but people tell me all the time how much they like the way I write my patterns. Yes. Yeah, so because you... I write it nice and simply, even if the, what you're making is more complicated, I yeah. always write it like you know, for everybody. <laughs> but, but you've also done that one in the round. They're both done in the round, right? Uh, no, the blanket's done flat, but the pillow is done, yeah. Oh, I meant the pillow, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Yes, which makes it so much easier than having to, I mean, don't get me wrong, I like seaming. I don't have a problem with seaming, but, you know, for a lot of new knitters, yeah. you know, they get discouraged with seaming because they pull it too tight. It puckers. It doesn't lay flat. So, you know, how or you do have you trouble lining it up so it looks nice. Yeah, yeah. that was well. And it's a lot easier to just knit in the round than it is to like knit across and purl back. And purl and so. and, yeah. Yeah. So that's well, and really, problem. I mean, you could if you like the purl side, you could flip the pillow inside out and have like the pillow for like the pillow cover inside out and do the purl side out. Yeah, you could. You could. And then I will be releasing at some point um, some textured pa patterns as well. Right. Keep and then... Use um, my finger. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Well, we might do some cables and stuff too, but I, I would say both of those patterns are good for beginners. Because mm -hmm. uh, they're both really easy to do. And I like mindless easy stuff sometimes too. <laughs> wow. The yarns I've suggested, of course, are two that I carry in store. And so for worsted weight, I suggested Anthem, which is 100% acrylic, or mm. Vintage, which is a blend of acrylic wool and nylon, and still machine washable. Yes. Uh, both yarns come in a ton of colors. Yes, yes. Uh, and also Anthem the one is, thing about the Anthem is it's pill-free, isn't it? Anti-pilling, yeah. yeah. Anthem has 82 colors. Wow. Okay. Uh, vintage has 95. Wow. I uh, know. So vintage they're great for favorite. things like this where you're looking for matching your decor or mm -hmm. what you're wanting to do because they have so many options, right? Mm -hmm. And they have those in between shades. Yes. So it's not like it, you know, if you're going for, say, uh, you're looking for a rose color. Um, you can have like a dark rose and then they'll go like a light rose and then they'll go. And so, which is nice because sometimes, you know, a dark rose isn't going to fit what you want, but if you're going a couple shades later, it yeah. does. So that's what I really like about vintage is the amount of colors that they have, but that they've also scaling it down. So there still may be that color, but you're going to go from a darker to a lighter. And I don't know how many colors they have between in that. Uh, it depends. They do quite a few. They have lots of blues and teals for sure. A lot Sorry. of pinks and purples. Mm -hmm. And then they've got a nice range of like white to black. Yes. So, yeah. and a lot of their colors are heathered too, which make it look a little richer mm -hmm. rather than just a solid flat color. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Was and that honestly, it's not that much of an investment. Like the skeins are 11 for vintage and yeah. anthem is six so mm -hmm. and both have fairly good yardage mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they're quality yarns yes like okay so the sweater i'm wearing is my snowbird and it's made out of vintage and i've had mm -hmm. it for like 12 years oh is it 12 years now something like that yeah 
but see that to me that is refreshing um you know i remember oh my gosh i was in my 20s i'm dating myself now so <laughs> um i'm gonna say you know mid to late 80s and i remember that um <clears throat> back then i was uh looking for some yarn because i don't think we didn't have michael's then like we had no first distributing edens um, you know, Zellers, that kind of stuff. But I went into a yarn shop mm -hmm. and it was like ceiling to floor yarn, but it was the old style. Like everything was in skeins, but they were like by color. Like it, anyways, and I went in and I was looking for a yarn to crochet with. And uh, there were a couple ladies there and they treated me like I had the plague. Like <laughs> I was a leopard because I went in and said I was looking for yarn to crochet with. Yeah. And yeah, and then I took a look at the price of the skeins, which back then was a lot more expensive than what they are today. Like you, you would think that they weren't, but back then there there wasn't the same amount. Yeah. And so, yeah. So, anyways, yeah, I walked out of there and thought, mm. so to see a yarn shop that is supporting, like with acrylic, there is a time and a place for acrylic. A lot of mm -hmm. people are always, and I call them the yarn snobs are always saying oh, I'm sorry I have to say it but they're always saying oh you know it's got to be a hundred percent it's got to be a hundred percent it's got to be a hundred percent well you know what if you love knitting for other people and you get that great joy to knit for other people then you know what they're not going to take care of your knits how many not times really yeah no but how many times do you go into a thrift store and go to the back where there's the pillows and the afghans and that and somebody's hard work is sitting there for three bucks yeah no. right for four mm -hmm. bucks or something like that so you know if you're gift knitting and i'm not talking to everybody you might have a good girlfriend who absolutely loves a hundred percent and you're going to gift her a bottle of soap to go with it in the instructions yeah. right then yeah, yeah all means like go and do it but most people especially with children mm -hmm. you know blankets for children or for people that do lead hectic lives they're not going <laughs> they they really don't want to be hand washing even with soak so if you haven't exactly. heard of soak before it's a a rinse free laundry soap that we use for doing our hand washing of anything we knit crochet um, undergarments, whatever, anything that you need to hand wash. Yeah. So you just put some in, add your water, put in your item, let it soak for at least 15 minutes. And then you squeeze out as much water as you can and lay it out flat to dry. And yeah, I use, I use soap to rinse my fresh dyes. Yeah. No, I don't. Of course I, I put them in, I use soak and I do rinse them after, but I also run my, uh, my skeins through a spin dryer. But um, anyways, I use it and I find that it works far better for me mm -hmm. to take the excess dye out of my dyes than what I have with anything else. Yeah. So, like I, yeah, I have, I have quite a few bottles in stock. <laughs> Well, and I do have quite well, a few of the scentless at the moment. I have them at the store. Yes. yes. And worth every penny. Oh, and they're a Canadian mm -hmm. company. Yes, they are. They mm -hmm. are. I need them to sell by the... <laughs> by the big jugs? By the jug. I don't want <laughs> just the little 500 mil. I need. I wonder yeah. if they would. Have the a jug of it? You can find out for me. Hold on one second here. I should ask them sometime. Don't mind my mess behind me. It's cause... not that messy. No worse than me behind me. I got messes everywhere. Oh, yeah. Well, no, because I've been moving into the office from the studio. Um, That's right. We have, uh, oops, hang on one second, just so that we can pull that out. Uh, there is soap there. This is the fig. So what I do is I, when I knit something for somebody, um, I always get a couple of bottles of soak and I send them one because you don't need that much. No. It's like, no, no, not at all. What is it? Like, like one a teaspoon, teaspoon or a tablespoon or something? Yeah. One teaspoon. Yeah. In one put a squirt in. Of cold water at that. Uh, yeah. Water. Cold, lukewarm, whatever you need. Yeah. It says cold water. Or cool water, sorry. My yeah. eyes are getting. 
<laughs> well, and with um, with our 100% wools anyways, you generally want to use cool, cool or lukewarm water. Uh, and do not agitate. Melt. Yeah. Do not no agitate. Felting. No felting. No felting. I did that once. Did Only that once. Time. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I did. It was with a sweater. And uh, yeah. I didn't realize that it was a hundred percent. There was no tag or anything on it. And yeah, I put it in the uh, washer and it I came out it on purpose. Yes, yes, yes. But this That's year it came out from adult size down to toddler size. It was pretty oh, quick. Dear. So <laughs> So what have you been working on? Too much. Too much. I don't know what I want to show for oh, you know what? I really ugh. I really got to get knitting on this. I do have the agate. If you want to pull that one up. Sure. Um, I have now done the back and I have separated for the armholes for this beautiful tank. And uh, yeah, so now I'm just going to work up from that chest there from the, the bottom of the uh, V-neck. And uh, yeah, so there we go. There she is. Very nice. And the same yes. color. <laughs> no the other one's the blue one. Oh, that's right you did yeah. um the same one as um uh, linda ambrose yes that's right you did that and there's the back so the back is done wow i you know i wanted to get it done this week but you know as i said um and that's where i was going to say where i'm so excited because for this trunk show i will be putting out uh some 800 uh, meter and last week I said 800 grams wouldn't that have been a huge freaking gradient <laughs> that would be huge <laughs> oh my gosh going for the world record an 800 gram yeah uh, scene uh, uh the gradient but no it would be 800 meters of gradient so <laughs> I'm really excited John says your top is pretty it is very pretty Oh, the, the, the it's, it's, yeah, it's too bad that yarn is discontinued. That is the Vivo. Yeah. I didn't even bring, I didn't even bring in the other skein. And you know what? They said two skeins, but I'm doing pretty good. I'm, I've got this, I've got that much left of the one oh. and I'm almost, yeah. Wow. I'm done. So I was like so excited. So <laughs> of course, you know me, I got to run out and I'll have to buy a pair of pants just to go. <laughs> No uh, pants to wear with it. Whoopsies. No, I don't have anything that, yeah. I, I don't know. I've got some khaki, like some khaki kind of cargo pants that are kind of in a, not khaki, they, I call them khaki pants, but I don't mean khaki the color. They're like beige cargo pants. So that, oh, yeah, yeah. Very, I think that would look very summery with it. So mm -hmm. that in my, with my bucket hat on. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's what you have to pick a color to match that then. I know, yet I was looking at, um, oh my gosh, thank you so much, Donna. Yeah. Um, oh, you would like it in the blue. Yes. Oh, so Donna likes the blue colors too, eh? Yeah. Yeah. I've got a few of those. For the bucket hat, I think there, I can't remember the color and uh, the type line was, um, oh my gosh. I sent you the color. It was a blue, but it's like um, it's almost like a denim blue. Like it, it is definitely um heathered. Okay. Uh, yeah, and that is the one that I definitely want to do because then it will at least match the blue jeans. But I need a bucket hat. <laughs> and I, I did. Uh, yeah, I really that will be my my summer my summer fun. Um, oh my gosh, that. Okay, well, I'll show you what I've been working on. Sorry about I ripped that. this out once or twice. Oh, is that the, oh my gosh, is that ever darling? Isn't it cute? It is very cute. So I'm doing a little, <coughs> excuse me, it's a baby top out of Rico Baby Classic DK. The colorway is called Carnation. Oh, that's a beautiful and pink. So what happened is they sent me a sample. Well, I asked my supplier because mm -hmm. I want to replace the cuddly I've got at the store. Um, so I asked a couple suppliers for sample balls of a couple of DK weight yarns that come in 50 gram skeins. Okay. And Enrico Baby Classic DK is the one I started with. 
Can you bring that a little bit closer? I just want to see the stitch mm -hmm. definition. That is so pretty. Yeah. It's a very nice stitch def definition. And so is that 100? That's 100% acrylic? No. Um, yes. Where did my tag go? Whoop. Look at me. I had to get close. No, to it's 50-50. It. It's 50 acrylic and 50... Polyamide or nylon. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And it comes in a 50 gram skein. Mm -hmm. So it has 165 meters. Nice. So my thought was, well, rather than just do a gauge swatch square like I normally do, why don't I see if I can whip up a sample? Because it is a baby yarn. Yeah. And yeah. then um, when the yarn, when I get the yarn, then at least I'll have the sample done. Yeah. And if I didn't want to keep the yarn um as one I was going to carry in store then I could donate whatever I made so yeah that was my thought behind that no that so is of course um I can't just knit a pattern I have to write a pattern <laughs> <laughs> so it's just a little top down um this will have where you pick up and do a button band because okay. babies can often be hard to get into things yes so you pull it over their head pop their arms in and then button that up to get oh. around beautiful and so i was thinking too you okay. could add sleeves on if you really wanted to yes now you're gonna have to make that down and you could go down and make it a onesie i don't really love onesies even oh, as a mom i didn't really love onesies oh no no we'll see i only have this much left so i've got to still do um the two armbands Okay. And the, like the two little, I was just going to pick up and do some ribbing and then I've got ribbing to do on this one and then ribbing to do there. Okay. So, so. what do you think of the yarn? Are you going to be carrying it or not? Yeah. It's really it's nice. nice. Yeah. And it has, I think Valerie looked it up on Thursday. I think it has 46 colors. Okay. And it has a variety of colors anyway. So yeah. And, and they're the not price? all like baby colors. There's lots of. Um, oh, that's a beautiful color. Yeah. But it's not like baby pink. No. They no. have that one, but. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But no, they have some darker colors as well. So like, just like vintage baby comes in like mm -hmm. baby colors. It also comes in some different ones as well. So yeah. yeah. Perfect for if you're doing something uh, like color work and you just need 50 gram skeins. Yeah. You could put in this instead of getting the 100 gram skeins in a DK weight. Now that is a pink I would wear. You know, I'm very particular. About yes, you pink. are picky. Yeah, but that is a pink that I would wear. So that's called yeah. carnation. Nice. Yeah, I would. I would wear that one. So I've been working on that. I ripped so, it out when we started it because I had to change my mind on some a few <laughs> things. That's just the design process. That's what happens. Right. And then next, I'm debating as to like what kind of sizes I'm going to do. This is like a three to six months or zero to three months size yeah we'll see i'll write it's patterns beautiful. for a couple larger ones maybe <laughs> and i stuck with like a gender neutral um stitch pattern yes it's a nice stitch pattern very it's, nice it's so easy oh okay especially when you're doing it flat it's a lot of knitting and barely any purling and then doing it in the round it's quite easy too perfect yeah, does that make you want to have like now I have no young grandbabies. I need to adopt. So will that fit a dog? <laughs> no, I'm not making a dog one. <laughs> Maybe no, that doesn't want make me want to have any more kids, and it doesn't want me to hurry up and have grandkids either. I'm good. Oh well, yeah. You still got some years. You got if you got one going. I up. hope so. Alt University, yeah, yeah. But you better not. Yeah, preferably yeah. not. Yeah, yeah, mom. I mean, stuff happens, but preferably not. Like yes, yeah. yeah. You're not ready to be a grandma yet. No, no. not what? in my forties. <laughs> not. Not in my forties. Okay. Not in my forties. But not my forties. I'm just all over the place here. Well, <clears throat> we can talk in there. That is my challenge, which I have to say has been a challenge. <laughs> I uh, 
you know, beyond growing my, getting my tomatoes and all that planted. Um, yeah. So if anyone remembers, and I forgot to put them up uh, as uh, pictures, a um, couple of weeks ago or last month, I went, uh, I've been using Holst Jarn from Denmark and I ordered in two surprise bags one in their pinks and one in their reds, I believe it was. Yeah. And uh, what it is, is when they are winding their 50 gram skeins, when there's not enough for the skein, they pull them off, put them aside, make these random kind of grab bags. So I decided to buy it in their, oh, there. there. I found a picture. Found a picture. So I ended up buying it in their coast, which is, uh, what was that? 100%? Nope. It's cotton and uh, nylon. Nope, it's cotton and Shetland. Duh. Cotton and wool. <laughs> yeah, but I think the, the coast is Shetland, isn't it? I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's, I think it's 45% Shetland and 55% cotton. Uh, but it is wonderful to work with. But none of the colors that came are my colors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 55%. Oh, merino lamb's wool and 45% cotton. Oh, so it's merino lamb's wool. Okay, yeah, it, it feels beautiful. It's beautiful to touch. It's beautiful to work with. Um, I asked Google. <laughs> oh, did you? Okay. Yes. Okay, yeah. And see, this is my memory. I never remember what things are, and I should be writing things down, but this week it's just been all over the place. Yeah, so, if I make notes or then I, yeah. Well, ask it, Google. <laughs> It took me forever to find a pattern that I wanted to make, like yes. a crochet square, because I would have gone to knit them squares. But I said that this was going to be a crochet project. Mm -hmm. I, I must have did about 10 different squares of different patterns till I could find, because I didn't, I didn't just want a circle. I wanted a circle, but yeah. I just didn't want a circle. <laughs> So this is called the wagon wheel. So you can see the spokes. Okay, yeah. And the wagon wheel. So yeah. I wanted something that was a little bit texture, but I didn't want too many holes in it. I didn't want it to yeah. be holy. So then once I decided that this is a pattern I was going for, now I have to figure out how to get these colors to work together. Mm -hmm. And that's not always easy. <laughs> no, sometimes it's not. Well, especially when they're not my colors. <laughs> And see, this is one of the things now, after having the yarn shop for so long, I have an easier time putting colors together than I used to, I would say. Yes, because I'm often that... working with people whose colors are not my colors. Yes, but the thing is, is I'm going to wear this. <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> so nothing is something I would wear. So trying to like putting these colors together, but then getting them all to match into something that I would wear yeah. is not, yeah, is not uh, quite what <laughs> So I finally decided after, let me see, I did 10 different squares this week and then I found the pattern and then I had to start figuring out how I was going to do the pattern. So I finally decided that I was going to go color, color, and then a white ring around mm. each one of them. And then I would do the backgrounds in a color because then I'm going to attach them together with white. And because I am doing a cardigan, I'm actually going to do like a bomber jacket. Mm -hmm. So I've decided that I'm going to knit the sleeves. I'm going to knit yes. the sleeves. I'm going to knit the bottom band. Um, I'm going to knit the button. Band. Well, actually, I'm thinking about putting a zipper in. So I'm going to knit the zipper band and I think I'm going to put just a small collar on it, a flip down collar, I think. So anyways, yes, trying to figure out if I would wear this because this is too bright for me. <laughs> and I like that square. I think it looks great. It looks good. If yeah. They bring your colors. <laughs> Well, they're not necessarily but, my colors either, but. but they're not. Yeah, it's just like. It's going to work. It will look absolutely fabulous. I am like, I am so stoked with it. Do you it. know how many squares you have to make yet? Have you figured that out? Uh, I'm just going for broke. I think I've got about, I think it's 20. Okay. But again, I've got these at five, five and a half inches. So 
We'll see when I get there. It should be four across. Okay. Uh, but we'll see. Because I'm, sh- I'm not sure yet if I want to stop short as in crop and do a long band, like a long ribbing going down, like about this much ribbing, so that it's the color and short, and then it goes down in the ribbing. Because I, yeah. I really like that style. So then I'm thinking about knitting the sleeves and doing the same thing, stopping short and then doing the ribbing down. So we'll see. I mean, it's all ideas at this point. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. That's an idea challenge, right? Yes. So I'm on my next square. And so far, this is what I got. Hmm. Looks good. Yeah. I would have finished it last night if I didn't fall asleep. I was pooped. The puppies just pooped me right <laughs> Ah, it's okay. We all have those days. I crashed out the other night too. And Oh, you were in bed pretty early. Sometimes I wake. Well, sometimes what happens too is I'll crash out on the, in the chair Mm -hmm. when I'm supposed to be knitting and then wake up and take the dog out. And now I'm wide awake again. So then I'll knit until like midnight. Oh yeah. Yeah. Too much. Yeah. But then the next day I'm like dead tired. Uh, Yeah. I just can't work out. I don't know. Work out the schedule. It's brutal. Did you get anything finished this week? Um, no. <laughs> Do I blue ever? Fur top. Sorry, Donna just said like blue fur top. I just, sorry about that. I was just reading some of I the. I think read them earlier. Did you? Um, I haven't gotten anything done because I've been knitting and ripping and knitting and ripping and knitting and ripping. Because I'll show you what I'm working on next. What are you working on next? Oh, yes. Yes, the Stria cardigan that I want to do. And so you can see in the picture, it's got all kinds of stripes in it. Yes, it's Um, a beautiful cardigan. It is. It's really nice. So Andrea only uses four colors for stripes. Mm -hmm. And I, of course, had seven. (laughs) Go big or go home. Well, so I tried it, tried them out. So in swatch number one, you can see I put in all of the colors, all seven. Yeah. I was trying to do like, people said, just throw them in a basket and pull them out. And if you get like two blues in a row, then toss the second one back and pull out a different one. Yeah. And I kind of sort of did that. Okay. But then I decided you can see there's the red stripe and then there's a teal stripe. Okay. That teal was just too bright. Right. Okay. (laughs) Compared to the other colors. The other ones are all nicely muted. Yeah. 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 And so, uh, and then I didn't like where the red was. So I ripped down to the brown stripe and you can see on the second swatch, I've got then red, blue, and yellow. So I swapped those out. <laughs> okay. Right. And yeah, that's what I'm going with. It looks good. Thanks. There it is. Yeah. It was hard to tell in the other picture that you put up about that teal being that bright. I know, but when you see it, like, in person, if you saw it in person, it's just, it is bright. Okay, yeah. Actually, it's and, coming up kind of green. Well, green. yeah, it's a greeny teal. Okay. But it's nice. very bright compared mm-hmm. to all the other colors. Mm-hmm. And so I decided muted was better. And I really don't need seven. I only need a four, but I'm going to go with <laughs> six. <laughs> so there's my swatch. But then, okay, so then I was reading further into the pattern. Okay. Because this is a cardigan and it's knit flat, except you have to do the sleeves in the round. Okay. So when you're doing the flat part of the pattern, it's a it's a half fisherman's rib. So you knit across and then on the way back you rib. So knit one purl one, but it's knit one below purl one. Oh. Okay. Yes. All really right. easy. And actually I quite enjoy it and I don't really like ribbing. However. I, oh, you don't. However. When you look at doing the sleeves in the round, like you're supposed to, it has a crap ton of purling. Oh, no. Because when you're looking at your swatch, so it's actually your wrong, your your row two, like your second row okay. that you're looking at on the outside. So this is the rib row, whereas the wrong side is your knit row. So when you're doing it in the round, you need to purl around and then rib around. Okay. So I decided, well, can I do the sleeves inside out? Oh, okay. Yeah. And can you tell the difference? Sorry, I'm getting really close and personal with everybody. (laughs) here. 
Not really. Because this is what I did. I tried it. You can okay. see these floats. So what I did was I knit across yeah. and then I slid my um, end, yeah. end back to the tip and then dragged the yarn across and then I ribbed. So, so you did have these long floats. So it's knitting in the round without knitting in the round. Okay. So it's like doing if you want to do a swatch, on. eh? It's like doing the uh what's the cast on uh for Andrea Mowry's Harlow hat? Uh oh it's um it's a is that the two color brioche one? Yeah, I'm not sure. Right. Yeah, it's a two color <clears throat> brioche where you move it over. Yeah, and work across in the second color or something. Yeah. 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 Or, you know, like That's with cool iCord, you knit them and then you slide them back and you knit them and you keep pulling from that one end. So same idea, except I didn't want it to close up like a, like this. I just wanted to see if my gaze would be the same if okay. I worked it one way instead of both. And so that's why those long floats are on there. Okay. So I tried it out and yeah, I can't tell the difference in my knitting. No. Between knitting it flat the correct way and then knitting in the round. Okay. So my plan is actually to do the sleeves inside out then. Why? How ingenious. I thought so. Andrea Mowry, if you were watching this <laughs> right now, go to Lauren. She'll figure out how she can get out of purling and ribbing. Usually it's the ribbing too, but somehow yeah. she is just, wow. So yeah, so what I have to do is then, so doing it in the round, what I'm going to do is I'm going to knit around. Okay. And then I'm going to knit one, purl one below on the next round. So I have to nice. do the opposite. And I just have to make sure that the one I'm purling below is the one I was knitting below when it was flat. So. Okay. So but I think that's going to save me a lot of hassle because I find purling really slow. Well, and it also alters your gauge most times. Not too many people get the same gauge between knit and purl. There's always that looseness going on there, right? So yeah. do it that way. Mine tends to be okay, but. Yeah, well. We know I, at least me, I can't talk for everybody else. <laughs> I like purling though. I love ribbing. Yes, that's true. And you like ribbing. ribbing and I don't. So I we know. all have our things we like, but. And I like so that's seeing. That's my plan. No, it's looking good. Thanks. How long do you think it's going to take you to get it done? No, I have no idea. <laughs> well, I have to take some pictures of this next. Yeah. And then I can rip out my swatch and I can start the actual project. But Nice. Nice. Yeah. That's going to look amazing. I think so. I'm happy with it. Is this a, with my color choices. Is this a store sample or a Lauren? Well, it's a both all the time. <laughs> I'll wear it at the store. You can wear it yeah, at the store. It might be my new favorite sweater. We'll see. I think so. It is beautiful. It was beautiful. I think it's cute. I think so. Yeah. And I don't have anything like it in my wardrobe so far. No, you don't. Well, no. Well, I tend to choose... When, because I don't do a ton of sweater knitting, when I right. choose a sweater pattern, I want something that's going to go with a lot of my wardrobe already. Yes. I'm not looking for an accent piece I'm going to wear once in a while. I want something I can wear often, yeah. and especially with cardigans. So I've always tended to choose, you know, like a gray cardigan or a blue cardigan, and that's what I make. Yeah. yeah. So. That's where we're opposite in that way, because I always go flamboyant. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm super practical, and I want the thing I can wear all the time. I'll wear it out and then have to make a new one. I know. I know. For me, I just got to try it. But, you know, I I don't know. Like, I like, I'm a coat. I love coats and jackets and, you know, that kind of thing. So, basically, my wardrobe itself is usually, you know, black jeans, black pants, you know, blue jeans, like cargos, like, and stuff like that. But even in my, my tanks and that are certain colors... Um, so they're usually gray and black and white. Like that's like my standard. And then I'll, that's one. And then I have that like brightly artistic kind of, uh, sweater, cardigan, jacket or whatever. And then I put that on top. So that's kind of the yeah. way that I manage it. But, uh, yeah. So, um, but I do like that sweater. I do have to get a little bit more on the practical side some days, <laughs> 
I remember at my job, we wear um, cardigans that look like Mr. Rogers. Right? So <laughs> it's like a daily thing. So for me to get out of those and go bright is like really wonderful. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So that is good. Do you have anything else that you're working on right now? Uh, yeah, but I haven't really done too much on them. I, I spent just... all of Easter weekend ripping things out and trying things and yeah. That was my whole week, ripping yeah. out, trying something, ripping out, winding yarn. Like yesterday, I just had an amazing day because I was winding skeins. And then when it was just a little too much on my shoulder, then I would go out and sit on the steps and watch the puppies run up and down the laneway. And then I would come back. And Nice. Yeah, it was really good. Where'd you just go? Oh, sorry. I got a notification on my phone. It's a circle. So, okay. Doing weird things. I have one more thing that I started that I'm going to show today, and it's the Storm Hoodie from the <coughs> Viking Knits, which we have showed on here a few times. Um, I love this book. I just like the men's patterns in it. Um, it's a book I always say is like knitting porn, so I kind of cut out half his face today. Uh, so mean! Oh, <laughs> uh, you know... He's just a joy. So I am using Holst Garn uh, Super Soft on this. It is like a fingering weight. And the cone, when you buy it, it is full of spinning oil, which I really didn't find that bad. So I am making this for my honey. Now I am using it as in a double. Okay. Holding it double. Um, yeah. What was I on? I'm using a... Goodness gracious. Here we go again. Leanne's never prepared you know, with her notes. Um, I am using a, yeah, 4.5 mil and a 5 mil. So right now, this it starts with the hood area, the neck. Right. Uh, let me just bring that up again. So it starts up there on the neck, and then it works down. So it is from top down. Um, I'm not going to go as long as that. No. Uh, that sweater is one that, you know, I guess when it's cold out, that a gentleman can sit on the edge of it and keep his bum warm. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, but it kind of looks like dressy, like dress style. So, no, no. So, anyways, the uh, resulting fabric is wonderful. I did a lot of test knits with this, swatches. Mm -hmm. So, I'm really pleased with it. Um, I did give this stuff a quick rinse before I started. But, you know what? I don't find it that bad to knit with it uh, in spinning oil. Not at all. Good. It's, it's a little bit ropey, but you know what? It is 100% uh, non-super wash. So it is going to be a little bit primitive. Um, I can't wait to do the, uh, the uh, color work on it, which is like a geometrical pattern. Mm -hmm. So this is what I'm going with. Ooh, that should look sharp. Yes, yes. That's what I'm thinking too, but that is the color. And I cannot tell you what this color is because it did come in that random skeins. Oh yeah. Course. But this is uh, their denim, the denim blue. And it's a bit heathered. It's not, yeah, it is. It's, uh, there you go. You can see. It's very nice. The fabric is really wonderful. So yeah, you're not gonna get it as soft as uh, Merino. Uh, you're not going to, whoops. Um, it's not going to stretch neither. So I'm pretty excited. I'm, I'm really excited to be working with Holst. Very, very so. I got a chihuahua who is bouncing around my legs or my feet. <laughs> she's like, she's, uh, you know, she's 14 and she's in heat. Oh dear. Thought she would have been in menopause by now. Come on, Bess. <laughs> yeah, no, not Betsy. Silly uh, Betsy. Yeah, she's molesting the puppies, though. That's the problem. Oh, dear. Oh, I hope that's not a word that's censored on YouTube. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, you're supposed to use the words like essay and yeah. So, But anyway, so that's where I'm sitting uh, this week. I have, uh, I'm, I'm hoping that in the next three days, I'll be going to the dye pots. Yay! I know, I know. I've got 40... Uh, 50, I got 50 skeins going in. Woo! 
do those in that uh, that morning. So yeah, I think I'll be doing because today is what Monday. Yep. Mm, yeah, I'm hoping to be going to the dye pots on Thursday. Cool. I know. So I any know. color hints you want to give us? <laughs> what yeah. colors are we anticipating? Blue, of course. Well. <laughs> Blue is a given. Everybody here really likes the blue. Um, mm -hmm. I, have, I have quite a few things I'm going to come out with, but it is spring. Yeah. Um, so, you know, this spring we are going to be doing some brighter colors. Awesome. Um, so, yeah, I, we're going to be doing some pinks, um, but this is the year that we're doing. I'm not, I'm, and I'm sorry, ladies, um, this year I'm not doing self-striping. Um, unfortunately, I know I love, you know how much I love doing self-striping. That's uh, right. But unfortunately, since the, um, the cervical, uh, surgery, my shoulder is just not up to using the mill. Yeah. So, cause you have to use the mill to wind off, like you're winding off over a hundred feet of one skein to do a self-striping and my shoulder is just not up to it. So even right now winding off for, um, uh, 800 meters or 400 meters I can only do so much in the day and then I got to give it a rest so yeah. um, I will have 40 50 so many that are going to go and those will be our regular dyes but then we'll be putting out a bunch of gradients so the year this going to be the year for bariatric knitter for the gradient schemes and cool. while I'm bringing that up, just to let everybody know that um, what we're going to be doing with um, the bariatric knitters display at Sweet Yarns now is we are going to be able to offer custom. So exciting. Yes. Custom skeins. Mm -hmm. So um, we will be, I'll, I'll have to have a sign put up for the 27th, but what I'll be able to do now is I'm going to be able to offer 650s, 800s. We can go 1,000, 1,200s. We can go right up to 1,800, 2,000 meters. So what this is going to do, and, you know, and we'll do that. We can do that in gradients. We can do it in any sort of kind of dye that you want. And the reason why I'm doing this is that to be dying all the time, I like doing custom work so much. I'd rather have a, an order that somebody wants something and then you're making it for them. And that makes it very special if you have mm -hmm. a custom skein. So what this allows is um, there's a lot of people that, um, how can I say this? I, I don't like offending people. Um, you know, I'm a dyer and I think superwash, there is a place for superwash. Yeah. Um, I don't, myself, I don't like using superwash in um, a sweater that's in the round. I find that it just stretches too much for what my liking is. So I'd rather mm -hmm. seam those. But this way, I know you and I've talked about it many times, is what we try and say to people is to cut costs down. Because, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. yarn gets expensive. And a lot of people start or begin to feel like they're just not making the cut. You know, like yeah. a, lot of, a lot of channels uh, talk about, this best yarn and this cost and they're all high-end yarns but that doesn't mean that you need to use those you know to make a beautiful yeah. product so in this case you can use a super wash with a non-super wash and you'll get more structure with it because your non-super wash will not stretch as much as your super wash does so by doing it this way offering the custom skeins you can get a custom gradient now and then you can work that into a plain yarn and you can do it that way. Whoops. I don't know where she disappeared to or am I gone again? I don't know. You've got the circle. No, that was me. I don't know what's going on with my phone today. Oh, she's popular. So this way it allows people to be able to use a different yarn. Um, you know, they can still buy a beautiful colorway mm -hmm. and Money on that and team it up with like what we've talked about before you know you can team it up with vintage it's yeah. half, half acrylic right and at least with vintage it you knit beautiful sweaters with vintage mm -hmm. like it, it just whether it's blankets sweaters bibs hats whatever vintage is such a wonderful Barocco really hit a home run with vintage 
just not only with the colors, but the structure. I yeah. just, so this way you can cut costs. And yeah. you can talk more about that because you're all in the finance and stuff. I'm just a <laughs> typical girl. Well, what's nice too is that vintage now comes in fingering weight. Mm -hmm. So if you want to do, um, no, like if you wanted to do a, actually, I think that is what Chantel's using in her tessellated or her velcro top. Yeah, she's using um, my color. She's using one retro. of your hand dyes. Yeah. yeah. And then for the main color, you need something that's solid. So she chose to use vintage sock. I'm pretty sure. Yes. And it looks in a white color. It looks absolutely beautiful. I saw it on Saturday. Um, I only saw the pictures, but did she not last year use my Parks and Recreation in a yep. sweater that was a sweater? Teen, was a team of vintage one was too? DK weight. And then she used, yeah, vintage DK for the rest of the sweater. Yeah. And that just all we're saying is, is that, you know, that does cost, cut costs down because, I mean, well, yeah, you know, if, when, when you think about it, as I said, my rule as a yarn dyer is to make you buy my yarn. <laughs> <laughs> That's what gets me more yarn, right? Like, right. Seriously. Yes. But, but the thing I mean, is you're not... more likely to buy more if you can afford to buy more, right? Well, exactly. And my goal now is not, and I've said this right from the beginning, you know, I don't like to overproduce, um, no. but I can't, but you know what, uh, when you're helping people and you're, to me, if you're taking the time to knit something, it's, it needs to look the nicest that you want it to look. It's yes. going to, whether it's a gift knit or it's something that you're going to wear, mm -hmm. you got to be proud, not only that you knit it, but the fact that it looks great, right? Yeah. So, you know, but I, it also needs to fit within your budget that you exactly, can afford to, exactly. so that you can keep knitting and crocheting and crafting and gifting things. Yes. Yes. So, yeah, when you're choosing yarns for projects, you want to think about, yes, what you can afford, but also who you're making it for. Yes. And so, and like, honestly, the yarns I carry in the store, some are expensive, but mm -hmm. some are not. Mm -hmm. And it's about quality rather mm -hmm. than blowing out your budget. And that's where I said before, the story of that yarn shop that I went to. Mm -hmm. A lot of yarn shops you go in and they don't carry anything below a certain you know, price tag. And it that just makes it hard. That leaves that everybody is going to. And I'm not gonna say Michael's is bad or Walmart is bad, nothing like that. I'm not saying that, but yarn shops, things like Anthem or even cuddly, mm -hmm. you know, those are qual like they are high quality. I'm sorry. Like I used to years ago, I used to buy from Hirschner's. Yeah. And I I'm saying years and years ago and the quality wasn't the same. It still is not the same as what I would get from vintage and the prices are comparable. Yeah. There's not that much difference. No, you know, so take care when you're choosing your yarns know what you're looking for know the difference between the feel of a yarn and again you know i don't want to bad mouth anybody but last year i had bought two different types of 100 percent canadian wool yarns mm -hmm. i'm not gonna say who mm -hmm. um one of them was very hard to work with <laughs> yeah and it would not soften up didn't no. matter what you did to it, did not soften up. It was going to be rustic. You wanted to line that sucker if you were going to make a sweater. Yeah, yeah you for want sure. to do a liner. You want to keep it on hats and maybe do alpaca liner in the middle or mitts or, or from mitts. It would have been good for, but it just would not soften up. And there is a difference between yarn that will not soften up and, and yarn that is just rugged. You yeah. don't have to have, you don't have to have untouchable <laughs> like that one was untouchable i'm sorry yeah but you can have a nice like canadian wool a nice rustic wool mm -hmm. and you know we've gone through that with lopi like they have any of your icelandic yarns a if lot it, of them are very rustic you don't they're not next to skin yarns they're meant for layering and wearing over top of other things because they're supposed to be like your outer layer 
Yes. A lot yes. of their yarns. Yeah. Yes. And but then they, there's other but, ones that are just that much softer because of the sheep that they're yes. getting the yarn off or the wool off of to make the yarn. Well, because Icelandic sheep have three coats. They have their under down, they have their regular, and then they have a guard hair on top. So I can't remember if it's Lopi that is done. It's spun with the guard hair in it. Yeah. That's where you get all that prickly action from. Because somebody sent me a skein of it one time to try and uh, knitting. And I, ended okay. up making a, I ended up making a backpack out of it because it was... <laughs> It made a really wonderful backpack. I think that thing was waterproof. <laughs> anytime it got on my shoulders, it was, it was itchy. It was pokey. Not itchy. Yeah. It was stabgy. You know, like whenever you rub your legs up against somebody that hasn't shaved for a week. <laughs> it was like... <laughs> so, anyways, so again, you know, know what you want, what you're looking for, basically. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and I, and that still goes back to, you know, for a nice rugged yarn, I love Briggs and Little. Yeah. I don't think, you know, when we talk about these rustics, um, it's, we were talking about the last time was the saltwater knits. Yeah. Uh, and they use Briggs and Little. So Briggs and Little is from New Brunswick, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, West Coast somewhere or East Coast somewhere. East yeah. Coast. I think they're in New <clears throat> Brunswick. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But to me that's a wonderful yarn it's still rugged but it's not itchy ouchy oh she's looking up something uh, yeah that's new brunswick cool. what's that it is new brunswick yeah it is new brunswick yeah. yeah yeah so it's a it's a canadian favorite i mean they've had that mill for 1935 was it uh, i think so yeah yeah that's where i want to go i want to go visit that mill after I visit Holst. <laughs> you just want to oh. travel the world. No, right? I just I just want to be in the Scottish countryside. <laughs> Ooh, the mill was actually first started in 1857. Oh, it was 1857. Boy, did I get my numbers wrong. Oh, but it's been the name of that woolen mill located in York Mills, New Brunswick since 1916. 1916 okay I said 1935 oops yeah yeah it's a beautiful mill I've yeah. heard stories about it yeah in the family but you know that's good old Canadian yarn and it's not super expensive no it's fairly budget friendly yeah so that's another one for people to look man my skin looks good today I'm sorry <laughs> Sorry. I was like, wow, I'm looking not that shabby today. <laughs> Got a glow. Must be <laughs> oh, my, oh, my. All right. Before we get too far off traffic, maybe we should end it for today. <laughs> maybe next week I'll have the, a gate done, but, uh, or next week we may be showing some dyes. Just that would be really fun. Yeah. I'll send them to you. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'll send you them to do the sneak peek next week. Okay. Like I'm, I'm, I'm planning for a Thursday dye. So if anyone has any suggestions for color schemes, Ooh. email Lauren. <laughs> well, they can just email the dyes, the designer and the dyer yeah. at gmail.com and I'll answer them. Because Lauren answers them anyways. I don't. I avoid it. <laughs> Yes, I'll, I take care of all of that kind of stuff. She'll let me know. Yeah, Leanne always tells me what her answer is, and then I do it. <laughs> well, at least I'm answering. True. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I love you all. I love you all. You're so funny. All right. Shall I exit us or get do our outro for today then? Did you exit it? Exit is good too. Exit it out. <laughs> exit it out. We're gonna exit it out. Okay. All right. I'll be adding the show notes later. So thank you for joining us today. We've had a great time chatting with all of you that were here live and those watching us later. We hope you enjoyed it too. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe and make sure the bell is turned on so you'll get a notification when we go live again or post a new video. Make sure to follow us on social media and Ravelry as well by clicking the link in the description box below. Yay. So until next time, have a good one.
Have a fiber filled oh, day. Fiber filled day. <laughs> Take care. Bye. Bye.